my name is Woody. This is Change in the House of Pods, a podcast about Deftones. That's Accelerator, one of two new songs from Gulch off their split with Tsunami. My guest today is Christian Castillo. He plays guitar in Gulch, and he talked to me about the recording of those songs in this conversation, which we had a couple of weeks or so prior to the release of the split. It dropped February 28th, and days later, on March 2nd, actually my daughter Roxy's first birthday, Chino Moreno tweeted out a link to Accelerator, and if you've ever listened to this podcast all the way through before, you'd know that's kind of a big deal. At least to me it is. The way I end every conversation on this podcast is with a request of my guest for three recommendations, and that's inspired by something Chino said before, that the only thing he really tweets are links to songs he likes because he thinks that's the coolest thing he could share on social media. It's pretty small, but man, that's significant. I mean, one of my absolute favorite things about Deftones is the music they put me on to. Tons of amazing artists. Everyone from Far and Will Haven to Bad Brains, Quicksand, or new artists like Vows. And if you heard my conversation with Matt James from Vows in season one, you know how significant that tweet can be for an artist. For Vows, it led to a collaboration with Chino. How cool is that? And Christian was cool enough to catch up with me a second time and tell me about that experience. So if you haven't listened all the way through before, you'll have to today and catch that part of the conversation. Next week, you'll hear me speak with Joe Riley from the podcast Musically Meditated. I've got conversations with Sly Massmeyer and Ben Levine from Vane ahead, Jeremy Bohm from Touche Amore and more. So please like and subscribe. Give the show a rating if the platform allows. All that is cool to see. Change in the House of Pods is available on Apple Pods, Google, iHeart, Spotify, TuneIn, all over the place. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Woodbra, W-O-O-D-B-R-U-H. I might do an Instagram live here and there with my good friend Miguel Sanders. Sanchez, who will also be a guest on the podcast this season. Miguel and his sister were in the Hexagram video, which is pretty awesome. But let's get to business. A lot of cool stuff here for fans of Gulch and obviously for fans of Deftones. I mean, Christian's first live experience at Deftones is insane. His thoughts on production and which genre Deftones fit in are profound. But my conversation with Christian Castillo begins with how he became the guitarist for Gulch. My buddy Cole just asked... Well, because I, I filled in, you know, that have you heard of that band Spinebreaker? Yeah, they're from they're from the Bay, um, from San Jose. I filled in for bass on that tour, on a tour that they did. And me and Cole got along really well. And I was like, let's start a band. And he's like, OK. And then like after the tour, like three months later, he sent me the demos for for, for the, the three song demo. And I, I heard it and I was like, this is really good. <laughs> And so, yeah, I've, I've been in it, I've been in it uh, since the start. And that was like 2016? Uh, yeah, 2016. So you guys then recruited a, a couple more friends and... Yeah, we, he knew that he immediately wanted Elliot to sing because they were in a band True Hearted together. And Sammy, who plays drums for us, was in another band. And then Cole saw him play live for a band called Young Love based out of Santa Cruz. And he's like, I got to get this guy drumming for us. So that's pretty much how that happened. And you guys have been playing shows ever since? Yeah. Yeah. Where do, where do you guys play? Like you're, you're from the Sacramento area, right? Or Santa Cruz is my understanding. I'm, I'm, I'm from Visalia, south of Fresno, but I moved to Sacramento a couple of years ago. Um, okay. the, only, the only reason I know, all those people from the Bay is because just from shows and like previous bands I was in. Um, so no, I'm not from the Bay. Every, everyone else is, but we had a bunch of festivals lined up and some tours that were going to happen. So we're fortunate to be able to play a lot of places. It's really interesting. Cause I've been, I, I didn't learn about you guys until like July or huh. August. Probably I wasn't familiar with your band until then. And then all of a sudden you became one of my favorite bands because oh, I mean, obviously the impact uh, of your, of your last album was, was huge. So, so I'm, I'm sort of playing catch up on, on like who you are and like where, okay. where this, where the scene originated from and like Got where it. you guys Got come it. from and all of that. So it's, it. it's all, and there's, there seems to be like for as for I feel like as well received as you guys have been as your last album was, there's not like a ton of, there's like not a ton of press about you, which is curious to me. Um, I mean, 
Kind of. I mean, we did some stuff for Revolver. Um, Cole, our other guitar player, he's done a bunch of interviews. Um, people have interviewed Elliot. So I, I feel like it's... You're out there. The press that we've gotten has like made sense. It's, it's nothing like too crazy. Um, I, th I think the biggest thing that, that happened was us having like our own three page spread in Revolver. So I, I think that's pretty cool. Damn, that's super cool. When did that come out? I think like December or January. Yeah. So, yeah, some, something like that. Damn, I got yeah, to check that out. Yeah, it was all I, I definitely got to check that out. It, it, it's not coming up very high on the Google search results. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> maybe, maybe I'm just a, a shitty detective. I don't know. Uh, so, so you guys have been playing shows for like three years and then all of a sudden you you stop because of the pandemic and then yeah. and then the album comes out or was the album recorded prior to the... Yeah, we recorded the LP prior to COVID. And then during COVID, we recorded a two song split with that band Tsunami. Do you, have you checked out Tsunami? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, that split's coming out February 28th at 9 p.m. Sick. So yeah, so that, that's, gonna, <laughs> that's gonna be sick. Yeah, that's why. So, uh, what is what is a uh, recording been like? Have, is it uh, similar to what you guys were doing, or are you doing it uh, like isolation style, passing stuff back and forth? Oh no, no, no. We we met up at Atomic Atomic Garden in Oakland. Um, the guy who did a lot did all our stuff is Jack Shirley. He did Def Def Heaven. He did Torso. He's done Oathbreaker. He's done a bunch of stuff. Um, so. Yeah, it's we recorded that the split that's coming out. It's the same way we did the LP. Like we, he just sets up all of our instruments and he just tells us, put the settings on your amp however you guys do it. Tune your drums however you do it. Like do whatever, and just play. And that's that's how the LP was recorded. The LP is all live except for the bass, but the wow. drums and guitars, it's all live. That's crazy. I feel like there's yeah. a different energy when you record that way, or at least as somebody, you know, oh, to music, it always feels that way, right? Ab absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's not super like robotic, like, you know, punching in. Well, there's like stuff like where you mess up and like you punch in later, but like the, the bread and butter of the songs is just on the spot live. And I think, I think like we did the LP in like one or two takes. I think like half of it, I, I can't remember exactly, but yeah, it didn't take us long. It took us less than, a, I think it took us a day to do that LP. Damn. Are you guys yeah. always like that? Were you just- No, no. When we, when we recorded this split that's coming out, um, it, it took us a while to get, to get those songs locked in because we haven't like practiced. It was only like, you know, passing rips around and all that stuff and ideas. And so we had to get those songs down before we actually recorded them. And that took like- I took a couple hours, but then like once we got it down, like it was, it was pretty cool. I feel like I saw, cause I follow you on Twitter. I feel like I saw Cole, I think tweet something about like, I couldn't be in a band that practices, like imagine that. Or so they're like yeah, in a band yeah, that yeah. rehearses or something like that. Yeah, man. I, I wish it, well, we all, we're all in like different areas. So yeah, it's hard. Um, but Cole did just get an electric drum set and our drummer works with him. So um, they're going to start jamming a lot more together. So that that's good. But I wish we had our own practice space and I wish we had our own just area to be creative. Um, I visited my friend, Matt, who drums in that band Gate Creeper and um, like, like last month. And it's crazy. Like he took me to his practice space because he he gave me a drum set. And so walk in the practice space and there's just like amps there's drums there's like a pa system and it's like man like you live like this like, like <laughs> yeah I, it I sounds know, like i'm super, super envious of that you sound like you're a multi-instrumentalist then you play a, a few different things i just play guitar and i just recently started to play drums maybe maybe three weeks ago i drove to phoenix to pick up a drum set he he just like gave it to me because i've been telling him like man I've been wanting to learn how to play drums since I was 12. And he's like, well, I have an extra kit. Um, it's yours. You can have it. Just drive here. And so I drove there and picked it up. And all I had to buy myself was the cymbals and the snare. But yeah. And then I found a practice space here in SAC. And I've just been going at it like whenever I can. How's it coming? So, you liking it? 
Oh, dude, it's <laughs> it's by far like my favorite instrument to play. Really? Yo, oh, easy, yeah. Why? Because you get to beat the hell out of something. <laughs> yeah, just I I like being like physical. Like I yeah. like I like running. I like working out. So drums is a really it's it's tiring. It's physical. Like when I'm done practicing, like I got you know blisters and I was bleeding yesterday. So it's just physical. And like that's what I love about it. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was I was watching a live stream yesterday of um, it was uh, Abe Cunningham, Roy Mayorga, and uh, Morgan from Seven Dust, and they it, it was I think it was sponsored by the their you know whoever their stick sponsor is or whatever, but uh, they were all talking about all the injuries that they've incurred because it's so physical, like you know everything oh. from tennis elbow and like like claw hand to oh. Morgan blew out his eardrum. None of them can hear out of their snare ear, like it's. So when I hear you talk about it's physical, I was like, yeah, that's that comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how long have you been playing guitar? Um, since I was probably twelve. I think twelve. Yeah. What? Uh, I'm not what... good. But I'm not good. That's the thing. It's like I've been playing so long, but like the bar is like, like. Like, there's nothing too crazy about, you know, like the Gulch songs. And like, I, I, I get by with the skill that I have, the little skill that I have. <laughs> you know, I've had this conversation because Deftones are notorious for saying that they're not very good musicians. But I feel like there's a difference between just being a player, like somebody who can play a lot of notes and then somebody who can uh, craft a song and somebody who can perform. Like, those are different things right like yeah, you can't yeah. just totally dismiss yourself as not very good having put out an album that has been so i'm not to gas you up too much or anything but like you that it's great and a lot of people have agreed like it's great so you can't be that bad i'm not bad but i'm not like i'm not like great like <laughs> i picked up my guitar for the first time in a couple months yesterday or the day before and i was like man like i gotta i gotta <laughs> step it up <laughs> crack but, <these> <laughs> Yeah, I gotta, I gotta step it up, but it's fine. What, uh, what made you get into guitar? What kind of music were you listening to when, when you decided, okay, this is what I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a crack at this. Saint Anger. Saint Anger. Yeah. That's my cousin, awesome. was playing, my cousin was playing a lot of Saint Anger, and like the first song I ever learned on guitar was some kind of monster. Wow, Not even really? No yeah, joke. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. sick. So uh, a big Metallica fan or just that album at that time? No, I, I love all their stuff. Yeah. Is that, is that um, primarily like what you were listening to then? Um, Metallica or? or... That, was, uh, that was like such a blur that time. But he was getting me into Metallica, Slipknot, Mushroomhead, and just, just bands like that. And that kind of just started. Oh, oh I think I was... I was into Lincoln Park before that. And then I went and visited him. And then he was like, oh, check out Slipknot. And I was like, whoa, this is, this is like next level. Yeah. So how did you get into Deftones then? I knew you were going to ask me this and I was thinking about it. And I, do, I don't remember. I seriously can't remember like, oh, this is when I found them. And this is when I, I knew, I know I got into them in middle school, but I don't know how. I, I can't recall when. And the first albums I got into were Adrenaline and White Pony. Those were the first albums I got into. And you were probably listening to, uh, I would imagine by then you had already been introduced to Slipknot and like you were probably getting pretty heavy. Do you remember the music? That oh, were, yeah. What, what else were you oh, listening to around like, that time? Oh, like in middle school? Oh, like tons of death metal, tons of thrash. I was super into that band uh white chapel like a lot um and like just like kind of stuff like that but then i realized i was like oh they're all influenced by steph so i kind of put the pieces together it's like oh actually come to think of it i think that's how i found deftones is because a lot of the bands i was listening to were influenced by deftones so i think i was like oh let me check deftones out and so i did i got into them and then i think i remember waiting for diamond eyes to come out yeah, I'm really young. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 20, 20, uh, 24, I think. I had to ask my wife the other day. I was like, "How old am I?" So, yeah. yeah. I'm 20, I'm 24. I'm I'm a I'm younger than everyone I know. 
but that's cool that you um I, I love to hear about how people get into deftones what they were listening to when they got into deftones and certainly what time in their life that they got into deftones and you certainly had it sounds like the the privilege like i did too like i didn't get into deftones until adrenaline and around the fur had come out so i i sort of got that that privilege that luxury of going back and and you know soaking yeah. up more of the catalog which is just really fun like when you get into a band and you dive in you know and you just yeah yeah absolutely all the way through do you yeah. remember the do you remember the the uh the songs that were hitting for you at that time um board um engine number nine um what's that oh passenger because i was a huge tool fan or yeah. i still am a huge tool fan and then i heard passenger and i was like oh i was like oh shit that's uh that's maynard and like yeah that song that song got me into white pony and then i listened to white pony and i was like wow this is the greatest album ever written <laughs> really you like as a middle schooler you were like yeah i was blown away i was like this is and my appreciation for that album and all their music just gets bigger and bigger as I get older and as they release more music. So, yeah. Did you play uh, along to the songs or anything? Did you, were you trying to play any of their music back in um, the day? No, not really. I think it was only within the past, like probably like five, six years that I've like noodled around and tried to um, learn some of their songs. But the first, the first song I ever learned by them was engine number nine just because it was in standard yeah. tuning and like I, it was already on that tuning. So, and it's like a fun, it's a fun song to play. Do you, uh, were you playing in bands though in uh, middle school and high school? Middle school? No, but high school. All right. I can't remember. Yeah. I think I was in middle school. I had this really, I was in a really shitty band with a bunch of high schoolers it was, just, it was just bad. I don't, I don't even remember what it sounds like, but I just remember it being bad. And then I got, and then I got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> For not being bad enough. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't remember. I think I was beefing with the drummer. <laughs> all bands are I was, shitty in high school. I was, in, right? I was in middle school and they're yeah. all in high school. So like, you know, I was just obviously just like a little shit. So I don't, I don't blame them. That's pretty funny though. So um, you said you remember Diamond Eyes coming out? Yeah, I remember like I finally got into them. And I was like, oh, I'm going to like look up more of their music. And then I remember waiting for that album to come out on MySpace. I remember I was on their, their MySpace page. Yeah, and then Diamond Eyes came out and I was like, like, this is it. And it's like, like, man, this band's kind of older, but like this new album that they just put out is incredible. And that's, that still happens. It just happened with Ohms. It's like, they've been out since the nineties. And to this day, they still continue to put out incredible music. And one of my favorite Deftone songs is on Ohms. And it's like, it just came out, you know, and they have this whole catalog of music. So. Dude, I'm, I'm sitting right there with you. I feel like Ohms is, I've been saying it's my favorite. It's my favorite album, which is crazy to think about when you go back and you're, I'm like, ah, oh, shit, but. Korea is a really great song or you know what yeah, I mean yeah. like like it always it's, makes me jump around but it's it's great every album has its own thing like that's why I don't have a fa that's why I don't really have a favorite and I don't really have favorite songs but every album does something for me and has done something for me in a different part of my life so there's months from like Saturday Night Wrist like that's like for me Saturday Night Wrist is the album for me right now like I've, I, I think out of all the Deftones albums, that album has gotten the least plays for me up until recently. And we're like, you know, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to listen to it. And what's that song called? It starts with an X. X-E-R-C-E-R-E-S. Yes, it's uh, Xerxes. Yeah, that's, I can replay that song all day. And it's just, it's such a beautiful song. And it's just, yeah. I feel like yeah. you tweeted about it or, or maybe posted about it on on uh, Instagram the other day. You were like, this is. The yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think that's when I hit you up. I was like, I got to talk to this dude. I got to see if I can get a hold of him because yeah. that's what's up. Like that's so what was it that made you uh, dive into Saturday Night Riz? Just knowing that I was in love with every other album except for that one. And I was like, you know what? Because I think because there's like a couple of like off songs on that record where it's like they're not really songs they're kind of just like samples and just like kind of like they're kind of weird 
And I think I must have just started that. And I was like, oh, like these aren't really like songs or like they're not, there's no riffs in it. So it's like, I kind of dismissed the album. Um, so knowing that I loved every album except for that one kind of made me suspicious, made me suspicious. And I was like, nah, this album has to be great. Like all their albums are great. Like this one has to be great. So I sat down, I listened to it and sure enough, like the album was incredible. That's really dope. I, I love that you decided to like challenge yourself. Essentially, you're yeah, like, yeah. "Nah, hold on, <laughs> let me check yeah. myself really quick and go look look into this a little yeah, bit closer." Yeah. That's that's dope. I feel like you're right on point too. Like, it's an album that I think for older Deftones fans, even older than me, have had to go back to. I mean, that was a really weird time in their career. So yeah, I think- yeah. You know, just the the question of whether or not they were going to be a band seemed like it was hanging over them for, I mean, yeah. since the end of White Pony, sort of, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, that, yeah. that time was was really weird, and maybe that's why I was so dismissive, but... but uh, Yeah, I think that's why I was, too, because I remember a couple of the members were, like, going through their own personal thing, and I just remember, I remember hearing about that, and so I was like, oh, maybe the album isn't that great, so I kind of dismissed it. So, yeah, I'm in the same boat as you. And the song with Surge, me and I've talked about this a couple of times. It's weird, right? Like the end, like Surge's part, Surge from System. Like when he starts yeah. singing the universe, it's weird. Yeah, yeah. It's weird, but it's, I don't, like, the older I get, the more I can ap- appreciate different types of music. And the weirder kind of like Deftone songs, now I'm like, this is genius. Like middle school me would have been like, oh, this isn't engine number nine. It's not like, you know, fast and like upbeat. So I think I'm more musically mature to listen to their like more weird tracks and kind of like appreciate it more. So, yeah. There's one really weird one on the self-titled Lucky You. I think that's the one that was on the on the Matrix soundtrack. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, what what do you think of that one? That one's pretty weird. Lucky you. How does that song go? I I know it, but it's it's like uh it's the only one on the record that's like synth. Um, here I'll pull it up. Oh yes, yes, yeah, 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 dude. I love this song. It's such right? like a it's such a mid two thousands dark sexy song. Yeah, if you're feeling lucky, la la. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a great song. And it's again, it's something I wouldn't have liked in middle school. But now that I'm older and like I branch out to different types of music, I'm like, wow, this is genius. Yeah. So is that why you think maybe um, Ohms is connecting with you? So you said your favorite Deftones song is on Ohms. Yeah. 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 Which one is it? Uh, uh, I'm going to make you pull out the, the yeah. 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 Um, my favorite one is. Pompeji? Yeah, I think it's Pompeii. It's Pom- oh, wow. Pompeii. I might, That's I might, their I might be wrong. It sounds like um, uh, they cover Drive by the Cars, and that song reminds me of that song. And I, I think... Yeah. I, I, I can hear the influence, because they cover that on Saturday Night Wrist. It's like the last song on the record. And that song, Pompeii, or whatever, however it's pronounced, reminds me of that song. So that's why I like it so much. And then it starts off slow and then it's just like it comes in with low guitars and like the the chorus is beautiful that's my favorite that 10 song by far that's cool i love that that song is like such an adventure like it goes in so many directions which which is pretty consistent yeah. with the whole album right like every song has a, a right turn and then a left turn and then it goes yeah, back the every, other way every, yeah every song is different every yeah they that band can do no wrong i feel like uh structure song structure is something that they were playing with and and i feel like there is something similar about gulch and the way that you guys um can take a pretty violent left turn you know what i mean yeah 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 (laughs) is there some influence there direct correlation no but i know cole who writes the bulk who writes like the main skeleton of the songs he loves system of a down and that's kind of like in the same realm to where System of a Down's music can just take a left turn. So yeah, like I would say like that type of writing um, is influenced by like that kind of genre of music. 
Yeah, I, I would say so. It's interesting um, that you chose the word genre too, because they are, uh, that, that's often the, um, the argument I feel like with Deftones fans is what genre they belong to, or, or at least maybe shouting out that they don't belong to new metal. Where do, where do you sit on that? Oh, dude, Deftones is definitely not new metal. But like you can you can say like adrenaline, like it definitely has like Chino's rapping, like you know, like there's like hip hop type beats. So when they first came out their first album, like if I lived back in that time, I would say like, oh yeah, this is new metal. Especially since like they were touring with like Linkin Park and they were touring with those bands like that. So I can understand why someone would say that, but once you get to around the fur and you everything else, they are the furthest thing from new metal, in my opinion. What is it that you think makes them not new metal? Everything, like the music, the the fact that he's not actually like rapping in every song. I think the rap is definitely a fair argument. The fact that he's not rapping, that he's singing, but mm. you know the the chunky riffs and and uh, groovy yeah. groovy beats that was like trademark. Uh, a new metal thing uh, yeah yeah like the low riffs with like the high tune snare yeah it's definitely but i think like that that entire like low tuned sounding riff and like the high drums were just popular during that time and even with like even with metallica's saint anger like you listen to that snare and it's just cranked up and you listen to the guitars and like they're playing seven strings on that album like they're playing low stuff so I, I think it's just a product of their time. Yeah. My what, what about now? How do you categorize Deftones? How do you, like, who are they, who are they in a class with? Who, who, what category of bands? They're just in a class of their own. It, it's, it's just like, like PJ Harvey. Like you, you can't, you can't put her into a genre. Like some people just have their own thing. And like you, like yeah, they have influences from like all these different types of music. But Deftones is just a league of their own. Like I, I really, I mean, the most obvious is like alternative rock or you know metal. It's cool that you brought up PJ Harvey because that's one of Chino's like favorite singers, and he, you know, oh, he, really? oh yeah, he loves. As a matter of fact, I think he's got a PJ Harvey poster like. I got to interview him in September uh, when the album came out and, and that was what okay. he had behind him was a PJ Harvey poster. Um, oh, so, like I know he's a big fan of PJ Harvey and a lot of like female vocalists. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I saw you posting about like Portishead or maybe, maybe I saw you in a t-shirt cause you're a photographer too. I, I don't want to forget to talk about your photography, which is oh. <laughs> insane. Oh, Actually, thank you. Let's, let's diverge for a second before we talk about, female vocal influence how did you start taking photos so the first experience i ever got with like shooting something was on a motorola razor flip phone that my uncle had and i was just recording i remember i was just recording something and i was like i don't know like really what i'm doing but i know the fact that i have a camera to something and i'm recording something i like this and so that I was like, man, I was like 10 or 12 or something. And then it wasn't until I got into high school where I was like seeing all these photos and I was like, man, like, like there's something about these photos that look really cool. Like I wonder what it is. And after some digging, I was like, oh, that's film. And so I got my first film camera when I was um, a junior, uh, either a sophomore or junior in high school. And I haven't, I haven't stopped. I have, have not stopped. I maybe stopped for like a year, maybe like a couple years ago, just cause I was just different time in my life. I was just going through stuff. So I didn't really shoot that much, but I have been like consistently shooting for almost 10 years. What do you like to take photos of? Everything, like everything is photographable. Everything is photographable. I can photograph anything. I can photo like I have my camera right here. I could photograph the light coming through that window. I like to shoot everything. Like I like to shoot like the in-between moments with my friends. I like to shoot, you know, the bad times, good times of like what I'm going through, my personal life. So I, I just photograph what's in front of me. That's yeah. that's just that's just what I do. That's really cool. I've always admired people who are able to 
like capture an image because it's really not easy. It like it can it can looks pretty easy and obviously functionally it can be easy to just take a picture, but yeah, yeah. To take a good picture is like you're telling a story, you're creating a like you're capturing a yeah, like that's yeah, that's different. Yeah. Your photography really seems to have like the stuff that's on your Instagram page, like mm. it's got a very distinct feel. I can identify like locale being like really important, like the scene itself, like the things that you're doing yeah. seem pretty high level. Have you like, did you study photography at all? Or you study photography? Do you mean like in school? Yeah. Or, no, or are you, I, so how are you? No, I, I didn't go to school for photography, but I study photography every day. Like I, I love photo books. I love buying photo books. And I love just sitting there with a the photo book and just looking through it and like going back and seeing like, oh, like Tarfer put this picture with this picture because of this. And it makes the most sense because of this. And then, yeah, yeah, I love watching documentaries. Um, so yeah, I study photography at pretty much every day. That's wild. That's really cool. I think that that's uh, so fascinating because it's almost, I guess, a, a complimentary art form to like being a musician. Like there's. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like there's, there's gotta be some, is it, is it storytelling for you? Is it like, what is, how do they compliment? No, cause there's not like really like a story I'm trying to tell. There's not like a message I'm, I'm trying to say. It's really like a lot of people try to get like really deep into it. Some people are with their photography, but mine, like, it's just like, Hey, that looks cool. Like, like I'm reacting to something that just happened in front of me. So it's my job. It's my job as a, you know, photographer to have my settings ready to have everything set. So when I see something, I just shoot it. So, you know, that's, that's mainly how, like how I work. There's no like real message. And I don't know, honestly, like for me personally, music and photography, are two completely different things but but i will say this um i've started to think of photography and books like music like if i have like a single photo it can have its own impact by itself but if i put another photo beside that photo it can have kind of like an at like a an added effect and those two pictures can work together. It'd be like playing like one chord and then another chord, like a one chord can be its own thing. But if you had another chord after that, it, you can make it happier. You can make it like kind of more somber. So only recently have I kind of made the connection between the two things. So I'm still working on that. Like it's still, my brain is every day, it's being rewired, it's being changed every day. So. That's really cool. That's really yeah. fascinating. Have you ever um, given any thought to the imagery with Deftones, the the visual aesthetics of the band, whether it be the pictures of the guys themselves that you've seen, whether they be in performance form and mm -hmm. or 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 just you know band photos versus um, obviously like I'm really into gig art. I think uh -huh. you know, that sort of stuff is really rad. Um, but then there's the album covers and the and the uh, the aesthetics of those, which obviously seems like something that's pretty important to you guys and Gulch and, and, you know, the art with which you're putting in, you know, to, to cover your art, you know what I mean? Like that's, yeah, yeah. like that's significant. Have you ever thought, what do you think about the Deftones in, in, in those terms and in, in a it's, visual way? One thing that comes to mind is just they're, they're such a product of their time. Like they're like the people that they choose to work with, like handle all their visual stuff. Um, I don't know, like the, the, the mid, the like late nineties, mid early to mid two thousands, they just had like this certain look with like the album, like very simple, but kind of just like, like weird and out there. Like for example, white pony, it's literally just an outline of a horse. That's all it is, but it, it works. That, that's the thing is it just works. Um, I've never really thought about, I've never like dove deep into like their art, but some, the only thing that comes to mind is just they're a product of their time and like their art is very, it's just very out there. And it's just very like kind of weird, but it, it works with the music. 
Have you ever thought about like what the impact might be of three non-white dudes and a couple of white dudes like performing? Mm. I guess it was new metal for a while, but alt metal, art metal, like and 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 how that because to me that's always been something that I guess I couldn't exactly put my finger on but there's there's something about the image of the band like the look of the band and that's sort of been transcendent and um yeah well I I feel like every album is different like every album has like a different artistic feel mm. like I, I don't know each album is different that's what that's what's so interesting about Deftones is every album it's different like it's it's almost it's like a same different band it's like obviously like the instruments like sound the same like abe's drums sound the same steps guitars sound the same you know vocals sound like the same but it's the songs are just different and the art that the art that comes with that music is also very different so it's kind of it's really hard to pinpoint it's really hard to pinpoint like, like any art. one thing or to say yeah 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 i yeah. feel that that's that's interesting because i think you're right like there's no doubt that and it's probably one of the reasons if not maybe the main reason why you know they've been my favorite band for 20 plus years is because they keep doing something that's different and i yeah. would imagine if it was the same shit over and over again i'd be pretty yeah. tired of it right yeah uh, yeah where did you sit with uh with koino yokan and uh oh. yeah I, I love I I see that's the thing it's like every album will kind of trigger a different time in my life and I remember I was a huge fan of Diamond Eyes and then Koina Yokon came out when I was in high school and I was going through like my first like real real like breakup but I remember that album got me through everything like it helped me stay on my feet and the songs are good. The like, songs are incredible. Rosemary is a like top five songs for me. And it's. I thought you said you didn't yeah. like to. I thought you said you didn't like to rank them or you couldn't name favorites. I can't. It's like I don't. <laughs> and I can do that with like a hundred other songs. But like, oh, it's top five. Yeah. But <laughs> I feel it's, that. Just one of the, it's, it's just one of those bands where every album and every song just does something different and has done something different in my life. So I react to them in a different way. Yeah. So by that yeah. time, um, had you gotten the opportunity to see them live or have you seen them live? I've seen them live twice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I saw them live, I think before Gore came out. Um, I saw them in Fresno and then I saw them a year and a half ago or a year ago at the Pasadena Daydream Festival with uh, The Cure in Pixies. <laughs> that show was funny. I, I walked in, I, I got into the, the fest and that's when Deftones had just started playing as soon as like, I passed like the security check and I can hear uh, Be Quiet and Drive. I can hear the intro riff and I was, I was, sprinting to the front i was running there was like a really old video um i posted it on my story but i was recording on my instagram story while i was just running i'll, I'll send it to you um yeah, you <laughs> i was running i was like i'm here i'm here and like i'm a smaller dude so i'm able to kind of squeeze through people a little bit better yeah. and i was like maybe 15 feet away from chiana all the way in the back and like it was huge like the crowd was massive and I was able to squeeze through everyone. And I was like maybe 15 feet away from Chino, the whole show. Wow, the whole yeah. show? Whole show. And it was funny, the first, the first time I saw them was excruciating because I had to sit through this band called Yellow Wolf. And it was just the most, it was just the most absurd and just the, the dumbest thing I've ever Man, I'm talking shit. I'm talking shit. I'm talking shit now. But anyways, anyways, I was front row. I'm talking front row for that for that band the whole time because Deftones came on after them. I had to pee. I, I was hungry, but I was like, no, I'm not moving. And so when the first time I saw Deftones, I was front row and Chino was just like screaming in my face. And it was like he was just like sweating on me. And, and it was just like, oh, my gosh, like. Uh, like I can die now. Like I can straight up die now. 
Wow. So that was my first time seeing Def Jam. Yeah. Dude, that's nuts. Yeah. That's cool it's as hell. So like for your first time to get all the way up to the front and then to get like that coveted, you know, that FaceTime. Yeah, yeah. Like that's yeah. insane. Do you yeah. any, any do you remember like any any moments from that? Experience? Yeah, yeah. So they played that show happened maybe not too long after Prince died. And then so when they were doing um the intro to board. Chino was singing Purple Rain on top of that board riff. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And like the lights were purple. And I was like, oh my. And I love Prince. I have I have a Prince poster over there. Like I, I love one. Prince. You see mine so, over my over my shoulder. Dude, let me show you something funny. <laughs> let me show you something funny. I have a Prince poster in the bathroom. So anytime I'm <laughs> like, like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah but point point oh. being point being i'm a huge huge prince fan so I, so that was that part of the show was incredibly like memorable for me because i was like oh my gosh i love prince and i know they do too so it was just it was awesome that show was incredible best concert i've ever, I've ever been to really yeah wow well, I, mean, I mean yeah like i had chino like right in my face we were screaming, um, screaming engine number nine together. Like the mic was right here. It, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. That's insane. Yeah. Is it fair to say Deftones are your favorite band? It's tough with Metallica know. hanging out there in the wind, right? It's like, I can't just leave Metallica in the wind. <laughs> I love so many different types of music and it, it's with Deftones, it's the same with different music. Like different music does something different for me. So like, I don't yeah. have, I don't really have favorite but i will say deftones is probably yeah it's one of my favorites yeah it's one of my, it's one of my favorites for sure so then uh when you saw them at uh pasadena chino's wearing his all-white painter's gear yeah um, yeah i remember <laughs> did you did you see him at that fest i did not no i've oh, watched okay. it on i've watched it online and, oh, you're, okay. and you're actually maybe the i don't know the fourth person from season two that I've spoken with coincidentally, who, who was at that show, um, uh -huh. which is, which is kind of oh, rad. Cool. It's, it's cool to hear um, your experience though, is a little more, you were a little more hell bent on getting up to the front and like, Oh know, yeah. Because 15 I, feet away. That That's yeah. Cause I, cause that first experience was just so like, I was like, that first experience was just so amazing. There's no way I'm going to be watching from a hundred feet, 150 feet watching a screen of them playing i was like nah like no nah, nah. skip that That's i'm getting up there and i'm like i'm taking advantage of the fact that i'm a smaller human being so i can kind of squeeze through people so and you got to do it now because there's only so many more years where you you're gonna have the juice for that at some point it just is like whoo that's a lot of work to get up to <laughs> yeah and then to maintain to hold that position but they make it yeah. so worthwhile because who else is doing that you know what i mean for 30 years Mm -hmm. like to get in somebody's grill and i really wonder how covid is going to change that you know what i mean like how mm -hmm. how it's going to take well you're you're a performer what do you what do you people are going to go balls to the they go balls to the wall at your shows like yeah yeah how, how is that are, are bands going to be feel safe are, are you going to be comfortable in front of a, a, a rowdy crowd yeah i mean as long as as long as I have my vaccine and as long as, you know, people get their vaccine, like I don't, I don't really see, I don't really see why that would be a problem. If, if anything, I think people are going to go even harder because they haven't experienced that in over a year. So yeah, I think it'll just be crazier. If anything. I hope so. I mean, I know it's going to be special to finally return to a live show, but I do yeah, feel yeah. like there'll be some trepidation. Like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know what everybody's doing around you. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of yeah, people yeah. who don't trust. I don't mean to be that guy who, like, sows the seeds of distrust or mistrust, but it does make me wonder, like, the way the world has been upside down for the past year. It's Yeah. People are going to take a while to write themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's going to be a trip. All right, so what about Gore? Well, where are you sitting with Gore? Gore... I really like Gore. It's the album that has gotten the least replay value for me, but when it came out, I was all about it. That song Prayers Triangles has my favorite, has one of my favorite choruses from that band. 
Um, and it's just like a different, it's just like a different album. Like if I'm feeling more of like a, if I'm just like in a certain mood, I'll put gore on. Um, so yeah, I, I really like gore. I know a lot of people didn't like it and I can see why, but I, I loved it. I think a lot of people talk about the production or the mix, or I think a lot of people throw those words around who don't necessarily know what they're talking about. What do you, what do you think they were trying to do with the sound of, of that album? I don't know. Whatever it did worked for me though. (laughs) (laughs) It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like to me, like it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter what they were going through in a production as long as it gets to me, like, for example, like it doesn't matter what camera was used to take a picture. The fact that that picture does something for me is what matters. So I don't really pay attention to production. Like when I listen to music, like I, I do, but it's not something that like determines if, if a song makes or breaks it for me. Like if the song gets me, makes me feel something, then that's good. It doesn't matter if like some like crust punk records that I really like. They're just sound like they were recorded in like a trash can, but those songs do something for me. So, so I, I don't know. People want, people these days want everything polished. They want to, they want to have ABC blocks in front of them telling them like what this or that means. And they want to be able to hear everything. People want their pictures to be sharp people want their pictures to have the highest resolution that's just like how we live today people want everything they want to know everything um so it's kind of i like when bands are mysterious and like have like a kind of like a lower um production not necessarily quality but there's certain things that you can do to make that to make the sound kind of more like just weird and out there which is what we did on the lp so yeah, I, I get it. First of all, what you're saying about as long as it you know connects with you, I think that that's more important than the rest of it. But there is yeah. something I feel like that is curious or interesting to me about the decisions or whatever led to that final product. Like how I, I feel like what you're talking about um, is very well represented in like diamond eyes. It's a very clean and polished and yeah. Uh, yeah. And like immaculate sounding record. Right. Whereas Gore does have like this, I, I don't know, dissonance or uh, to me, it, oh, it sounds like a live album. It sounds like a, a, a live album that was recorded yeah. in a studio in a sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. But, and then, and then they come to ohms and it's this weird, yeah. like lo-fi gritty, like, like that, that's curious to me. Like, how did they get there? How did that happen? What, any, any theory on that? Any, any idea? Like how do bands could decide to get to that sound? It's just different. Like people want to do different stuff. Like with, I don't know if you've heard our EP, but that EP was recorded by a friend of ours and it's really clean. It's really polished. Like it, the guitars sound clean. Like we play, we didn't um, play it live. Like everything was tracked in, individually. Um, but for the LP, we were like, well, we want to play it live because uh, we feel like our our live performance kind of cuts through a little bit better. So it's just, you know, once having things really polished is really nice but it's kind of it's kind of sterile and it's kind of boring and there's not as much character for like the musicians to shine through so you know i i i can i can probably i feel like i could relate to them like well i mean i don't know exactly what their mindset was but yeah it's like koina yokan was super polished diamond eyes was super polished even Saturday Night Wrist was like, it was like, it's a pretty polished record. Um, and I would actually say that for almost pretty much everything. So it only makes sense. Like I could see if like, you know, we've been doing like this polished thing for a while. Let's kind of, let's kind of take it back a little bit. And I can, I can totally relate to that. So that's my theory. I think it's cool. I think it's so interesting. You know what I mean? That's uh, Ohms in particular to me is the most interesting album because of the, whether they were organic or decisions like purposefully made to have this particular sound. Like, yeah, 
the journey that gets there is really is really fascinating to me you know what i mean like it's yeah. it's, it's interesting to think about like how people make the decisions that they make you know what i mean yeah and i yeah i think it's also just a product of this time that we're in right now because you know people are like while people want to know everything and like you know they want all the information possible from like an art source there's a, a handful of people who don't and they want things to sound more organic and more tangible so that's why you have like stuff like film photography like it's taken off in the past five six years you know people are buying records more so people are just you know they're wanting something a little bit more organic and I, pe people are kind of a little a handful of people are like kind of over like that super polished yeah you know aspect of things and they kind of want to take it back like like for example cassettes a lot of people are buying cassettes right now mm -hmm. they, they don't they don't sound that great you know but mm -hmm. people but those sell and like we have a lot of people like who ask gulch like hey do you guys have records or do you guys have cassettes and it's like we don't yet but we will eventually but anyway point being like people these days there's a good amount of people who want like a more raw organic tangible thing to hold on to you know so mm. that's what i think i think it's i think that's uh, right on point uh and and um it's really fascinating to think about the mediums that people are going to whether they're you know cassettes or or albums or mm -hmm. maybe, maybe people maybe there'll be a cd renaissance i, I don't know it's, it's yeah a, there maybe. probably will be there probably will be i know there's like a handful of people who love cds and um yeah, we've been asked like a bunch, like when are we gonna make CDs? So yeah, it's, I could see the CD renaissance happening. Well, they better do something about the Discman because that thing sucked, that was terrible. <laughs> Those were awful to carry around. <laughs> Couldn't do that again, couldn't go back to that. Yeah. Um, well, uh, how I like to conclude every conversation is with a request for recommendations. Uh, this is inspired by something Chino said on a podcast where he only tweets out links to um, songs that he likes because he thinks that's the coolest thing that people could get from him on social media. You know, he can't, yeah. can't reply to every text or every tweet or whatever. Uh, so in that spirit, uh, put me on to three things and it doesn't have to be limited to music. It can be anything old, new, just three things that you think people should, should check out. Oh my gosh. Um, Ah, oh, that's such a loaded question. Um, <laughs> man, constantly paralyzed by choice. Um, if you're not into the band Massive Attack, do you do you do you listen to Massive Attack? Do you know who yeah. they are? Yeah, yeah, Mezzanine is one of the greatest albums ever. Go. Yeah. If you if you're not into Massive Attack, check them out. So that, that's one thing. Uh, man, what else? Um, massive Attack, uh, go vegan um, if you can, if you want to. Um, what else? Um, man. That's such a low, that's probably the most loaded question sorry <laughs> uh, um, i'm surprised you haven't put me onto a photographer it's hard to recommend photo like photographers because everyone's taste in photography is just so different it's just man oh check out um drain the band drain from santa cruz check them out so check out massive attack dive dive deep into their discography like what they're about see what you can do to lower your carbon footprint in this world and check out drain because drain is incredible our drummer sings for that band and they're just they're incredible they're they're gonna make moves for sure and there's some tours that are planned for next year that are just <sighs> it's out of this world and like i've been seeing them since they've been playing like small rooms and to see them do the things that i know that they're gonna do like next year is just absolutely incredible. So check out Drain for sure. Drain rules, amazing recommendations, massive attack rules. But Christian was clearly not stoked about being put on the spot here. I'll admit it would be far kinder of me to prepare my guests and let them know the last question is coming. But anyways, something amazing happened after this conversation. A couple of weeks passed, 
the Gulch tsunami split drops, and on March 2nd, Chino tweets out a link to Accelerator on YouTube. This is Christian explaining how he found out. I, yeah, I was just, I was just driving home and it was funny because I was listening to Deftones. Like, like, per, like per, per usual, I was listening to, I was listening to them and then I got home and then I was in my room and then I just opened Twitter and then someone tagged me in it. And then I go to the tweet and I was like, whoa. Like I, I literally yelled. I was like, whoa, because I don't know. That's just it, it was really random. I was just it was something I was not expecting. I mean, it was so, like probably what, a, a less than a couple of weeks after the split dropped too. like it was. No, nah, it was like. It was like a day. Really? Yeah, it was like the day after. Wow. That yeah, means yeah, he's yeah. that means he's on you guys like he's been like following you, I guess. <laughs> Did you talk about it at all with the uh, with the other dudes in the band? Yeah, everyone was everyone was like pretty stoked. Me, everyone else likes Deftones. Cole likes them, but isn't really like he's not like a Deftones head like we are. But um, Elliot is for sure, and that's and I just saw him actually two days ago, and we were just like, yeah, that's like the only thing worth kind of fanboying over because elliot loves deftones just like me so so that was pretty cool that's so wild man to think that like first of all i think you are the first artist that's been uh on this podcast with me who has actually been recommended by another guest which a was cool frank maddox uh recommended you when yeah. i when i asked him for the his recommendations that's so cool. that alone was dope but then like to turn around and it was funny too because i remember how you were like ah this sucks <laughs> i don't <laughs> i don't want to kick out these recommendations and then to turn around and like to see it happen to you like that this whole thing that was inspired by what he does like that he uh -huh. tweeted out your like that was that blew my mind i feel i felt like i was as mind blown as you might have been yeah yeah because i he's really i feel like he's really specific with what he puts out on his Twitter because that's all he uses his Twitter for. Um, and he only, he only tweets music once every, once every like a couple times a week, I think. So you must really like it, which is really cool. And it's rarely ever heavy music. Yeah. 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 I noticed you know that I mean? it's always like soul or like some kind of like off some weird eighties, yeah. like synthy something yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. like never, it's never and and I, I just think it was so cool that he picked accelerator like that that it just that it resonated think, and it was like yo peep this out that, yeah that seems to be the song that everyone likes that's crazy that's crazy congratulations on the split by the way it's really oh thank you it's sick it's super sick thank you I'm, so yeah. so have you uh have you reached out or anything have you tried to connect have you uh tried to send a a, a thank you or like a no digital high no. five no, I, I haven't. The only, I've only, I've only been talking to Frank about yeah. collaborating with some stuff in the future. I, I don't know what, because we don't have anything planned at the moment. Like we don't have a release. We don't have, we don't have any deadlines for anything. So there's nothing right now that I think we could collaborate on. But something in the future for sure. And he was, he was super down for it. That's it. Yeah. That's ill. Well, I, don't, I, I, didn't, I was so close on like fanboying, but man, I used to, I used to draw the Lincoln Park cover in elementary school, like every day, like on my little, on my binder, like on a piece of paper and put it in like the, yeah, you know, like in the slip in I, the front. Yeah. 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 I used to, I used to draw that thing all the time because he's the one that spray painted that. Right. Yeah. 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 If I recall correctly, they brought him the soldier and then he put the wings on it. Okay. Yeah. I think it's but he did like, like a stencil though, right? Yeah, yeah. And you can yeah. totally tell like that style just feels like his like LA street style, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's super cool. Well, I'm I'm certainly stoked uh to see whatever comes. Like what whatever may come that it's out there that there is like this mutual admiration is is so yeah. cool. It's just so cool to see other people given their favorite artist their flowers and then like that reciprocating is yeah absolutely we gotta amazing. get chino on the song hell yeah 
Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, can you imagine that? Like, it would completely blow my mind because you, you guys are... I mean, you're heavy music to yeah. think about like him doing something on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that'd be crazy. He's done. He's done. He was like on a he was on a strife record. He, he did a song with them. He's done. He's done some heavy stuff. So it's not like it's so far out there. But he, I don't think he's done anything like like us. So I, I think it would be pretty cool. God, that's so cool. I can't wait to see what happens next. Huge thanks to Christian Castillo. I really appreciate you, man. Super smart, great perspective, incredibly down to earth, dude. I'm cheering for you and I'm cheering for Gulch too. Uh, a couple of thoughts on this conversation before I go. First, there is video of Deftones performing Bored with the Purple Rain intro. It's on YouTube and it's definitely worth your time. Search Deftones Bored Fresno 2016. You'll find it. It's amazing. Also, what is it about Deftones and breakups, man? I, I mean, I think I know, but I, I guess I didn't expect it to be such a universal experience. For Christian, it was Koino Yokan after a breakup. For Josh Carter and Braun Daler, it was White Pony. That's crazy, dude. It really is. Uh, finally, one of the most profound parts of this conversation to me was what Christian said when I asked him about gore in its production. It's sort of a tired topic, to be honest, but I'm glad I brought it up with Christian. He said it doesn't matter what they're going through in a production as long as it gets to them. That slaps. And he also said it makes sense that after doing so many polished albums, they might try something different. Totally logical. And, and maybe I'm being greedy or too nosy, but I want to know how they arrived at those choices, particularly as it relates to the sound of gore and the sound of ohms, the overall sonic quality of those albums. They're apart from the rest. I don't like to say nosy, though. I just like learning how things work. You know what I mean? My name is Woody. You can reach me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Woodbra. Hit me up. Let me know what you think of the show, if you have any guest requests, or if you just want to talk about Deftones. Uh, and please join me next week for my conversation with Joe Riley from Musically Meditated. Thank you for listening to Deftones, and thank you for listening to Change in the House of Pods. <laughs>